it's the same nature which pervades everything. In the core of every atom you will find it. In the core of every star and galaxy you will find it. Like boundless space, for example. Boundless space, it contains everything, doesn't it? It contains all the stars, it contains all the galaxies, it contains all the planets. And yet, at the same time, it's not hindered by this. Right? All this is just contained in the vastness of space. Right? So in exactly the same way, that which is so-called formless is not separate from form. This is why there's a certain statement in the East. Emptiness is form and form is emptiness. They are not separate, they are not distinct. This form that I'm looking at right now, it's the same energy in a, in, a, in a certain form. But if I break this down, and I break it down to its source, it will be of one and the same Buddha nature. So Buddha nature is more of a cosmic energy. It's not something which is human-centric. So this is something which actually can be terrifying for human beings because as human beings we want to see everything as a reflection of our own ego, right? Yes. We've seen God as a reflection of our own ego. All the different philosophies and all the different religions that have happened on the planet, they too are reflections of our own ego, right? Somehow we always want this continuity of the ego to, to go on. Without the continuity of the ego, our identity will be threatened. So much of human activity, it's more, we're not really concerned with coming to terms with the truth. We are much more concerned with self-preservation, preserving our limited identity. And the more we preserve this, our limited identity is, is you're creating more of a limited possibility out of yourself. So in a way, this is a kind of death. Transformation is always a death-like experience. It is destructive in a way. Destructive in the sense that the old has to die and it has to die completely. Only then can there be the birth of the new. So transformation is always a destructive it's a, it's a bit destructive in that sense. It's also tremendously purifying. Actually, you can look at it in two ways. If you want to use positive terminology, you can say it's purifying. If you want to look at it in negative terminology, you can say it is destructive. Like, let's say, you know, you ever heard of black holes? Yes. Black holes. They'll be moving throughout the galaxies. These almost infinite points of mass which sucks in everything around it. Even light cannot escape from the magnetic and the gravitational pull of a black hole. Do you know that? Not even light can escape from it. And like this, the black hole will be moving throughout any galaxies. Anything that comes within its range, it will simply be destroyed. But this is nature's way of purifying the cosmos. So that which is destructive is also tremendously purifying. Look at how your digestive system works. How does it expel the toxins from the system? How does it release the stool and the feces, for example? It's a destructive process. You're breaking down all the materials in your system and you're expelling them from the system. But at the same time, this is tremendously purifying. You understand what I mean? Actually, if you look at the story of Christ's crucifixion, if you see it in this light, from this interpretation, it has, it's rich with meaning, it's full of meaning. What is the crucifixion of the man on the cross? The crucifixion of the ego, the crucifixion of the limited identity, of this limited possibility. What is the resurrection?
the transformation that happens out of total death. And like that, there are so many different kinds of transformations that are happening in nature. For example, I don't know if you know this, coal and diamonds, they're made of the same chemical substance, they're both made of carbon. Now, how is it that coal becomes diamonds? They look so different, most people will be so surprised to think that, okay, these two things are actually related. When you take coal and, you, and it's put in the depths of the earth, under very extreme, extreme heat, under very extreme temperature, a transformation of the molecular structure of the coal happens. And over time, the coal becomes transformed into diamonds. This is a radical transformation or the transformation of a caterpillar into a butterfly. It's a radical transformation, isn't it? It's a totally new different kind of being. What is it that happens to the caterpillar? It will create the cocoon for itself. It will enter into the cocoon and in the cocoon over some span of time, it's literally chemically disassembling and reassembling itself. And then once the whole process is complete, what comes out of the cocoon is a butterfly. And if you keep on looking in nature, you'll find these kinds of radical transformations are always happening. They're happening all over the place. But it's so amazing that all these tr radical transformations in nature are there but man is so ignorant about his own transformation, about the possibility of transforming his own consciousness. It reminds me of a statement of one Zen master named Fayan. Foyan, sorry. He said, it's as if you have an eye which can see everything in all directions, but it fails to see into itself. Why? Why? 